Hey, what's up students? So good to see you all. My name is Daryl and we're going to continue even wrap up the series that we have been in over the past couple of weeks uh, titled The Thief of Everything. And the one thing that the thief that we're talking about over the past couple of weeks is comparison. And how oftentimes comparison can be the one thing that steals our joy. And so you're probably thinking about when it comes to comparison that there's probably some people that you might look up to, right? Maybe you look up to a LeBron James. Maybe you look up to a Simone Biles. Maybe you look up to a Serena Williams. And those things are not bad things at all. We should all have people in which that we look up to, people in which that we want to aspire to be like. But over these past couple of weeks, we've been talking about how even sometimes when we compare ourselves to people, that those can be the things that rob us of joy. And so today we're going to talk about, even when it comes to comparison, how we can ultimately see um, ourselves through the lens of how God sees us. Because oftentimes I know for us, even as students, that most of us tend to be and want to become, you know, one of the popular people that we might see in culture nowadays, right? We might see them as having more followers. You might see them as having more friends. You might see them as having the, the, the right fit or the right drip per se. And we think in our minds like, hey, that's someone who I want to be like. That's someone that I want to model. Maybe it's even someone that they might look like like to have it all together on the outside, but really when you look at what's happening on the inside of their heart, it might be something that's totally different. And so how can we be the ones that can, one, guard ourselves from comparison and not trying to be like the people in which that we want to see, but ultimately to be the people that God has created us to be. And so as we dive into this story, I just want to give us just one verse. And we're just going to unpack this one verse and what it means for us just to now view ourselves through the lens of how God sees us, just to ensure that the only person in which that we should look towards to become is Jesus. So let's see how we can do this. And so it's Romans 12, 2. It's a common one in which that we know, but it simply says this. It says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And you might be thinking, hey, what does this verse mean for us in the context of comparison? Oftentimes when it comes to comparison, comparison really does start where? starts in our mind. Because how we think about ourselves, that's ultimately what we will believe about ourselves. That's even will translate into how we act and how we respond, maybe how we dress, how we navigate through life. And so it's so important for us to ensure that if we want to be the students that know full and well who we are and what God says about us, it starts with Hey, do we actually believe what God says about us in our mind and to allow that to transform our hearts? Because you might believe, hey, I know God has created me, but, but I really don't believe that God has created me to, to have purpose or to be unique or to know that my identity is set in him. But oftentimes comparison can creep into your mind to make you believe that you have to be like somebody else and not like Jesus. Because someone else, they might seem as if they have it going on, but then when you look at Jesus, it might not look like something that is attainable or something that you might want to be like. But when you look at Jesus, ultimately we see his character. We see the way in which that he lived life. We see his patience. We see his leadership. We see his humility. We see his integrity. And ultimately, that is the one person in which that we should truly be exemplifying day in and day out. I know we might have a lot of different examples that are in culture and how those examples can start to seep into our mind. And we might think that, hey, I want to become more like this person rather than becoming more like Jesus and knowing what God has said about me in his word. So it's important for us to know that because oftentimes what happens when we compare, when we compare, when we look at someone else, when we look at everything that they have going on, it can also make us believe that we're less than. It can also make us believe that, hey, I, I don't have enough. Oftentimes it can lead to more anxiety. And that's why the word cautions us so much against comparing ourselves against people because they're, they're not perfect. And as we know, 
But if we are comparing ourselves, they now become our standard for which how we're supposed to live. And so that's why it's important for us, as Romans 12, 2 says, it's just to simply renew our minds around God's word and to allow God's word saturate our minds to where we know, hey, this is what I believe about myself based on everything that God has said in his word about me. Because when something else seeps into your mind, that can be the thief that robs you of the life in which that God has created you to live because you're living a life that you're not supposed to live because you are fixing your eyes on another person rather than fixing your eyes on Jesus. And so we know this happens when it comes to comparison. So it's important for us to do this one thing. And this one thing is this, and that is to choose to see yourself the way that God does. Don't see yourself through the lens of how someone else might see you. Don't see yourself through the lens of how you might think you have to be because someone else is, is acting that way but choose to see yourself through the lens of how God sees you. Students, I want you to know, and I want you to even believe, and maybe you even have to ask yourself the question, hey, do I believe everything that God says about me? Man, do I believe that I'm loved by God? Man, do I believe that God has given me a distinct purpose in this life? Man, do I believe that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made? Man, that God has created me and God knows me and that, and that God has given me an intrinsic value because he has created me. Do I believe that so much about myself? Or, man, do you believe that you have to be someone else? Someone that, that, that might be out there in culture? Or do you believe that you have everything in which that you need because God has given you so much because he's loved you, he created you, and because he created you, he's given you all this value. But do you believe that about yourself? Because in order for you to truly be the one that is experiencing the joy and wish that you can have in Christ every single day, it starts with what you believe about yourself in your mind. And when that goes all the way down into your heart, that then changes how you live. And so start with your mind, students. Don't allow anything to creep into your mind to make you believe that you have to live at a lesser version of what God has created you to be. And allow that to really, uh, really begin to, to, to dwell within your heart so that you can live out the man or the woman that God has created you to be. Don't allow anything else to, to, to rob you of the joy in which that you can now have in Christ because you know that your identity is set in him. Don't allow the world to creep in and to make you believe that you have to be somebody else or something else, or have everything, because God has given you everything in which that you need in Christ Jesus and in his word. But in order for us to know that, we have to choose to see ourselves through the same lens of how God sees us. See, oftentimes I find myself wearing glasses, and when I'm wearing glasses, they always tend to get dirty. They get smudge marks on it. They might get some food on it. They might get some crumbs on it. And then when I put those glasses on, everything in which that I'm looking at, it's as if it's this big fog. It's as if there's something there. But when I take the time to actually clean my glasses and I put them back on, everything is now clear. And oftentimes, that's what happens with us, right? There can be so many different ideas or perspectives or things you might see on social media and those can start to fog up our lenses for how we even see ourselves. But the beautiful thing about what God has shown and God's love and how he demonstrates that love to us is that because of the gospel, because of God sending his son to, to wipe those smudge marks away from our lives so we can now see ourselves clearly, because of that, when we believe in everything that God has done for us and the work of the cross and Christ dying on the cross for our sins that so we can now have a relationship with God, then we no longer have to see life through, through a clouded lens or through smudges on our glasses. We can now see life clearly, but most of all, we can see ourselves clearly as well. So as we wrap up this series, students, I want to remind you, Choose to see yourself through the lens of how God sees you. Because what you believe about yourself is the most important thing about you. But in order for you to believe everything that there is to believe about yourself, 
you have to believe what God's word says about you. Because that is the most important voice that you should listen to. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for who you are. God, thank you so much, God, for creating each and every one of us, each and every student, Father, that you have given us so much value because you have created us. God, I pray that we would simply believe everything in which you say about us in your word, and that would start within our mind. Help us to renew our minds around your word so that it can dwell within our hearts and it can change truly how we live and how we see ourselves. Dear God, we love you and we thank you. And it's in your son's name that we do pray. Amen.